All right, guys, the Utah Jazz lose to the Houston Rockets. This is Hanson James. This is the this is the SLC Dunk post game show. I guess I'm drunk from getting destroyed by the Warriors, or not the Warriors again. The the guess I'm drunk from being destroyed by the Houston Rockets. But anyways, the Houston Rockets, if you didn't bo- know by now, are incredible. <laughs> I guess I'm. That's what's going on. Is in my head. Are we playing the Warriors? No, it's the Rockets, and they're incredible. And they very well might be the best team. No, they are. They're the best team in the NBA. Who are we kidding? When you're scoring like that and playing defense like that, you've got big man play from Clint Capella. You're incredible. I'm going to talk about the Jazz in a minute because there were some interesting things with the Jazz. But we're going to talk about the Houston Rockets first. The Houston Rockets are incredible. There is, there's just not a real weakness that you see with them. I mean, you, I guess you could um, argue defensively there are a few uh, points of of uh weakness but i mean at times the rockets have had a top five defense in the nba so i don't know if you really can call that their defense a weakness i mean in the in the playoffs they're going to be fine because they've got trevor ariza great wing defender they've got uh pj tucker who they picked up who was a big time pickup for them this offseason because he can play center for them at times and guard centers well but also spread the floor on offense and do some nice things that's the Rockets are dangerous, and and I know the Warriors are incredible and are going to be just as good this year as they always are, but the Rockets are going to give them a run for their money because the Rockets are just flat out incredible. Incredible. There was one play, so the Jazz and Rockets go toe-to-toe for the whole game, pretty much, which was impressive by the Jazz. For, th- for three quarters, the Jazz went you know toe-to-toe with the Rockets, kept close, uh, actually had a lead in the fourth quarter. They were up by like six, and then the Rockets just exploded in the fourth. There, you know, there's just not a lot the Jazz could do. The Rockets were just, they're just incredible. So there's, like I said, there's this play in the fourth quarter that the Rockets, um, where they, you start off, you have Harden, and Harden's being guarded by Cephalosha. Sees a better defender, gives it. Can't remember if it was Cephalosha or Joe Johnson or whoever, but sees that he's being guarded by a good defender, puts it over to Paul. Paul kind of dribble, dribble, goes, and then gets the kick out, and it goes to Eric Gordon. That's unfair for most teams. How do you guard that? So you have James Harden, MVP, MVP candidate, who is running the show. You have uh, MVP candidate and future Hall of Famer. You have Chris Paul, um, has been an MVP candidate in his career, an all-star level point guard and future Hall of Famer. That's the secondary option. The third option is Eric Gordon, who I – think he's been an all-star but if he hasn't he's at least been all-star level as your third option to hit the three and then you have Clint Capella and Trevor Reza. Trevor Reza is like typically between 33 and 42 percent from three throughout his career I don't know what he is right now but without looking I promise you it's high <coughs> and so they're just so difficult to guard I don't know how you guard them because if Trevor Ariza shooting threes is like your fourth or fifth it's like your fifth best option because your fourth option is Clint Capella, who was like 10 for 12 or 9 for 11 or whatever it was at the hoop. He was incredible. He had like 16, 17 rebounds. The Rockets are unbelievable. They're unbelievable. And so if you don't think the Rockets can can go in and get some wins against the Warriors, you're incorrect. You're incorrect. James Harden, MVP candidate. It's either him or LeBron. Take your pick. Either way, you're correct because they're both incredible. Best players in the league. Chris Paul, I mean, I had uh, some questions about it in the regular season. He has done nothing but win every single game since he's gotten healthy. And in the playoffs, there he's going to be – he's going to give Harden the rest he needs. So, like, last year, Harden gets tired, basically. He just runs out of gas. And by the end of the, the Houston Rockets playoff run, they were just done. But now you've got Chris Paul who can take possessions from Harden, allow Harden to not take the entire load of the offense every single game. It's it's going to be interesting in the playoffs. Rockets Warriors is a definite possibility for for the Western Conference Finals, and whoever wins that probably wins everything. So impressive team, the Rockets guys. I'm so sick right now. This is flu game for me. I'm coming through like Jordan. Flu game, post game show. <coughs> Anyways, if you didn't know, the Rockets are great. Definite chance to beat the Warriors. It's three times the Jazz have played the Rockets. Can we be done playing the Rockets? Please, they are so freaking good. It's incredible. I'm so done with the Jazz playing the Rockets. It's it's ridiculous. Uh, the Jazz should feel good about themselves. They're down. They're two best big men. 
The Donovan Mitchell played. Let's see. So Donovan Mitchell played 21 minutes, actually more than I thought. Was three for seven from the field, but 0 for two from three. Uh, was a minus 15, two rebounds, one assist. He had four steals. So one of the things about Donovan is he being guarded by their def- best defender, Trevor Ariza, and then he's guarding their best player in, in James Harden. It's incredible what Donovan Mitchell's doing. He's absolutely phenomenal. And I don't know if he was wore out. There was one time I saw him and he just kind of did one of these. Like he's just worn out. And so it made me wonder maybe he's sick a little bit and that's why he only played 21 minutes. <clears throat> or maybe there's some injury that's nagging him. Please, hopefully not. But uh, yeah, so interesting from uh, just to see how far Donovan has come. He's a legit star in this league already and just going to continue to get better. And just had an off night tonight. I, it's like a little weird. He only played 20 minutes. I don't know. I don't know if maybe he was sick. Let me know in the comments. Was was Don, was he sick? I don't know. Uh, Rodney Hood was incredible this game. If you can get production out of that, like by Rodney, there's a reason the Jazz were able to keep up with the Warriors. Rodney was playing incredible. Ricky Rubio was really solid again. All of a sudden, Ricky Rubio starting to put a put together game after game of solid production, starting with Boston. And honestly, it can kind of be tied back to the fact that when when Gobert got hurt. And and then Favors got hurt. There's just the spacings back, and so the Jazz just need to find uh, the Jazz just need to find a way to get the spacing while also, keep, also keeping the de- the defense. That's going to be happening by Rudy Gobert staying healthy, which has been difficult this year. He's had two or three times where people have fallen into his legs and he gets hurt. That's just fluke stuff. That I, there's not a lot you can do about that. Uh, expect a trade with Derek Favors at some point. That's going to happen. Um, I don't know to who and I don't know for what, but it's probably going to happen because the Jazz need to do something so they don't get left with nothing. And it's not only going to give them something for n- instead of nothing, but it's going to fix their spacing, spacing issues, which have been a problem this year. If we can fix the spacing, Ricky Rubio and Rudy Gobert can actually be on the floor together and be positive, and you can have uh, some spread the floor action for Donovan Mitchell, and eventually Dante Exum is going to come back, and that's going to spread the floor even more for him which will be really nice. JL Stryker, why was Mitchell benched in the fourth quarter? I don't know. That's what I was wondering as well. Like, was he hurt? Is he sick? He looked like he might have been sick, honestly. Maybe he's a little worn down from how many games they're playing. This was, honestly, guys, this was the third game in four nights. You know, we shouldn't even have even been close to the Rockets. Third game in four nights, it catches up to you. It really does. And so I wonder if they're just saying, hey, Donovan's, we're out, tired. We don't need to injure our future superstar. That might have been it. But big big props to Rodney Hood and Ricky Rubio, who played really, really well. Through three or four, three and a quarter quarters, the Jazz went toe-to-toe with the Rockets, even outplayed them. And then the Rockets just exploded in the fourth quarter like, holy smokes, eight or nine three-pointers. Just incredible. Eric Gordon is an incredible asset to that Rockets team. Him hitting threes is just such a weapon for them. Props, I mean, all you can say is respect to the Rockets, who are incredibly good. And I'm excited to see if they can beat the Warriors in the playoffs. I'm excited to see it. Uh, Epe Udo was really nice for the Jazz. <coughs> for the Jazz. Uh, for whatever reason, the refs gave a 26 or 7 to 8 free throw differential to the Rockets. That's frustrating, NBA officials. That's all I'm going to say. But that's frustrating because the Jazz were going to the hoop and they were not getting the calls. And it was going the other way. So, bleh, bleh, it's annoying. I hate it. But whatever. I don't like to complain about the refs. All right, guys. That's uh, all I got today. The Jazz are hurt. We need Derek Favors or Rudy Gobert back to get our defensive identity back. Um, the Jazz are piecing it together, though. That's one last thing. Qu- Quinn Snyder's an incredible head coach. Can we just um, appreciate how good he is? Without our two best big men, he kept it close with the, the Rockets almost the entire game. And then their talent just kind of overcame because their talent is exceptional. But the only way that you even stay close with talent like that is coaching. Quinn Snyder should be considered for coach of the year, considering all the losses, losing Gordon Hayward, George Hill, Gobert, Derek Favors injuries, um, lost Dante Exum for the entire year, in which he had planned the offense around Dante Exum, and he lost him. And he still found a way to get wins, keep this game close, develop Don- Donovan, X- Donovan Mitchell. Incredible coach. He's incredible. He's as good as anyone out there, and I don't want to hear it. All right, guys, like and subscribe. Go to SLC Dunk, read all the stuff, click all the links. Go to SLC Dunk Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. My name's Hanson James. Follow me on Twitter. I'd love to talk to you unless you're a jerk. I'll talk to you later.